But over the last few years, we've developed methods of using functional imaging to try and look for signs of residual cognitive or mental function in patients who sustained very serious brain injury, for example, patients who might appear to be vegetative. We've even managed to show that some of these patients are conscious, even though they appear not to be. And in a recent case, we showed that a patient could even communicate using brain imaging. I think probably the person who has influenced my career most is the celebrated neurosurgeon from Montreal, Wilder Penfield. Wilder Penfield was one of the godfathers of neurosurgery, but also was a very important figure in neuropsychology, the process of understanding how the brain works by studying patients who have sustained brain damage. You know, I think it's very easy to sit on the fence with a question like that and say that both of these things are important, but actually we know that that's the right answer. You just have to look at people that have genetic disorders to, to be able to know that your genetic makeup is very important for how your life plays out. But on the other hand, there are very good examples of people that might not necessarily have been born with the genetic makeup to be enormously successful that manage to work hard and practice and do exactly the right things to pull off amazing feats. I think actually everything is very much up in the air at the moment. I mean obviously exercising regularly, eating well, these things are good for your body and they're good for your brain. But as far as what specifically can make us better, everything really is very unclear. I mean, early this year, for example, we, we showed that formal brain training doesn't make you smarter. I think up until that point, many people thought that it did. And I think we need to look again at what sorts of things um, might be beneficial uh, in these areas.